All right, so I wanted to make a quick video to just kind of give you an introduction to calculus limits. Uh, I want to show you how to do some problem solving with limits. I also wanted to show you how to do um, how to conceptually understand limits, since this is going to be this is likely to going to be the first thing that you cover in your calculus one course. So uh, let's get right into things. So basically, what I wanted to describe to you is what exactly is a limit. So I'm going to describe this using a graph right here. Uh, and sorry, I know that I, I just kind of drew this graph myself, so it is a little sloppy looking. But um, I want to basically say, like, let's just say we have a graph here. Let's just say we have a random function and it makes a curve kind of like this. And I'm just kind of making up a random curve. It just goes like that. Let's just say that this is our curve. And let's also say that we have two points at our graph. Let's say we have a point right here. And we have a point right, um, let's say that we have a point right about here. Okay. Now let's say that um, over here, we have a solid dot, right? So we have a solid dot like that. Let's say that over on this other point at uh, negative five, we have a, a, a hole in our graph there. We have an open dot right there. So what if I asked you to find the limit? So let's just say that I ask you to find the limit at x goes to positive two. And let's just call our function f of x uh, like that. So in, in this case, this would be our x-axis, right? And this up here would be, well, this would be our y-axis, but instead we're going to call this our f of x-axis because the y-axis is always going to be the output of whatever your x-value is. And that's the case for, that, that's hopefully something you remember from, uh, from pre-calculus is that this is going to be the output of the function. Um, so let's say that you have this function. I'm asking you to find the limit as x goes to positive 2. How would you do that? There's a pretty easy way to do this. All you have to do is you have to start somewhere on your graph and you have to literally follow the curve and follow the curve until you see it lands on x equals two. And right here, we have our x equal to two, right? And so if we go up here, we can then look on our f of x axis and see where we're at. And it looks like we're at about positive three. So this would be f of x equals three as the limit approaches positive two. And that right there is a correct answer to the problem. Now, you might be looking at this, and if you uh, if you remember back to precalculus, you might be saying, okay, but how is this any different than just inputting a value? Like if I just ask you to find f of 2, how is this any different? And in this first case, it's actually not different. It would be the same thing. You just go to x uh, to on your x-axis and find where the where the curve is right up there, and then you look as to where it is on the f of x-axis, and it would be at positive 3. So this would be the same value here. But what is it, why do we even have limits then if it's going to be the same? Well, because there are actually a lot of situations with limits where you'll have a limit, but you won't have a plugged in value. And an example of that is right over here. And th there's actually a reason why I drew a hole in the graph right there, because um, this is a situation where it won't be the case. Let me show you. So basically, if I ask you, and actually, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of all of this because I don't think we need any of this. So let's say instead that I ask you to find the, the function value at negative 5, right? Well, hopefully you remember from pre-calculus that if there's a hole in the graph, we say that it doesn't exist because that means that there's no, that, that value isn't there. So we can say it does not exist. And that would be a correct answer if I asked you to plot it at negative 5. But what if I said, told you to find the limit at x approaches negative 5? Well, surprisingly, if you said that this does not exist, you would actually be incorrect because the value actually does exist. So what is the value? Well, you just find the value and you basically just pretend that there's not a hole there. So you just go up to where the, the curve is and then you go to your f of x value. And again, you're at positive 3. So positive 3 would be the answer. So as you can see, this is a situation where the two answers here actually differ. And when you have a hole in your graph, you need to remember that the limit still exists. And you could have a limit at any point. You could have a limit at negative 6 here. It would be wherever this curve is and you just look here so it would be positive 2. Or you could have a limit, say, at 7 right here. You just go up here and then go to where your graph is. So it looks to be at about positive 5. So as the limit approaches of x approaches 7, you could say that that's positive 5. Or as the limit approaches, uh, or as I think we said, negative 6, that would be positive 2. So you can have a limit at any point on the graph. Uh, but there are a few cases where you can't have limits. There are actually three main cases. The first one is if the limit has a gap. So if there's the limit has a gap. An example of that, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my curve here that I drew. An example of that would be to say, for example, if um, if there were two functions where one was going like this and another was was going like that, and I ask you to find the limit as x approaches 4, right? Well, in this case, it wouldn't exist because there's a gap and there's, there's two places. It could be positive 6 or it could be, it looks like that's at about 1.5, so it could be 1.5. Uh, we don't know, and the truth is, is that value actually would not exist there. So we would just say that that's a situation where it wouldn't exist. 
Another situation that we could have is where the f of x, where f of x goes to infinity. So, for example, let's just say that I asked you for the limit at x as x approaches 2. Let's say that I ask you to find this. But let's say at the 2 point right here, you have a function that goes like that, right? And you have another curve that goes like this. Well, at this point right here, there's really no functional value that you can define. So this is another case where you would say that, the, that your limit does not exist. And then there's a third case uh, that the function also won't exist. And this situation is if it reaches an endpoint and you're asked to go beyond that endpoint. So for example, if you have a curve that goes like this and it just stops right there. And like, for example, if I said, what is the limit as, uh, as x approaches 6, for example, well, if we go to 6, there, there's no curve here. We can't measure up and go that way because there's, there's no curve here. So that's another situation. If there's, a, if there's an endpoint, an endpoint of a closed interval, that is another situation where it will not exist. So these are three situations where the limit does not exist. Now, I'm going to stop the video about here because I want to keep these videos short, but in the next uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to go over how to solve these mathematically. But that is just kind of a little introduction as to how limits work and what they are and how they would be represented on a graph. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.